Okay guys, here I am again, Liz Merrick. I'm going to show you how to make a rainbow cake successfully. And I'm gonna do the super easy version um, because I've got I've showed people how to do my cakes before and I know a lot of people just use Dr. Mix uh, Dr. Box Mix cakes and you know that there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna show you how to do this rainbow cake with just a box mix, um, just in case you're not like a cake making guru and you know you want to do it the easy way. So what I have is one Duncan Hines white box cake mix here. And I've done a couple little things to it just to make it uh, um, a little bit tastier and actually work for us a little bit better. And what all I've done is replaced the oil in the mix with melted butter. And I've replaced the water with milk. And the reason for that is it makes it taste better and it actually holds up better when we actually uh, go to stack it and sculpt it and that kind of stuff if you're gonna do that. So I have my full box mix already mixed up here, and I've got some bowls and some pans ready to go. I'm going to do 6 inch layers, but if you're going to do 8 inch layers or 10 inch layers, you might need more box cake, just so you know. So I'm only doing 6 inch layers, so I'm only going to use one box, cakes here, box mix here. Ugh, I can't talk. So this is about 28 ounces, I weighed it, and the reason I did that is because I want to divide this up sort of evenly. So um, I'm going to weigh my batter about four and a half ounces each and then add color to it. So um, the way you do that, I, I'm going to use a scale. You put the bowl on the scale and you press tear and that's like, okay, scale, ignore this bowl. And now when I add the batter, it will only tell me how much the batter weighs. So we're going to measure out about four and a half. I'm not going to freak out about exact measurements. Well, the reason I'm doing four and a half is because I'm going to do six layers. So 28 divided by six is like 4.6. So we're going to go four and a half. So I'm going to go first, first one here and tear. You could do this with, with, um, scratch mix if you wanted to, but here's the thing. We're going to be adding color to this batter, so it's very, very important that whatever recipe you use, leave out those egg yolks. Those yolks are yellow, and they will mess up our colors. They'll make the blues green, and they'll um, make everything look sort of muddy, so use egg whites only. And if you're taking out egg yolks, make sure you're replacing that amount with the proper amount of egg whites. So one egg yolk weighs 0.6 ounces and one egg white weighs one ounce. So for every two egg yolks, you want to replace it with one egg white, about. You don't got to get crazy with exact amounts, but you get the idea. Oops. I only have four bowls right now because I only have four pans. So I'll measure out the rest of this in a sec. I'm going to prep my pans with some flour oil mixture. This is, I, I was like a shortening girl for like ages where I used the shortening and flour method. Finally, somebody in my Sugar Geeks group convinced me to try this and I freaking love it. So <laughs> there you go. Won me over. I, I can, my mind can be changed sometimes, you know, it happens. Not very often, but you know. So we're not making our layers very big because we're going to stack six layers on top of each other. So a normal layer of cake is probably about two inches and then you tort that in half. So we really are want to shoot for each one of our colored layers to be about an inch tall so that we don't end up with a ginormous ginormous cake. Alright, I need something to mix. Spatula. I'm going to start with my blue first. This is um, Americolor Gel. It's very concentrated so it works really well for this sort of thing. Um, I'm using sky blue so I'm going to actually try and squeeze out enough electric blue. I don't, I don't have like ton of this left so hopefully normally I would use electric blue because it does have more of a true blue color 
and sky blue has more of a um, green undertone. So that mixed with the little bit of butter yellow undertones that cake, it might turn a little green on you. So I put just, I don't know, a few, a few big hefty drops and I'm going to see if that's enough by just mixing it together. And you can see that's a pretty nice blue. So I'm just going to mix that together to the point that the color is incorporated well. So I'm going to grab my spatula. There's no swirls in there, white. And I'm pour that into my pan. Spread it out. This like barely covers the bottom of the pan. So it's gonna bake up super fast. Me, I'll put this in there for maybe like 15 minutes. It's like barely, barely covering that. But that's okay. I'm going to do the rest of my colors real fast, stick those in the oven, and bake them off. When we're done, let's do purple. This is Americolor um, Regal Purple, which is a nice pretty purple color. You can see it's got kind of a little bit of a blue undertone. So to brighten this up, I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of electric pink. And that will just kind of give it a little bit of true purple color. That kind of just brightens it up. If I had electric purple, I actually like that color better. But I do not right now. So we're just using this color. Into the pan you go. get hung up on the fact that we're using all of this food color. It's probably, you know, like a good two, three drops per layer. And if you're against food coloring, first of all, I might ask you, why are you making a rainbow cake? Secondly, it's nothing more than what you would find in any sort of candy or artificially flavored soda pop or anything like that. So don't freak out about the food coloring that we're adding. The green, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, Americolor Leaf Green, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of Electric Yellow so that my color is very crisp and beautiful. If, if I just used the green all by itself, it would kind of have just this dull green color when it's all baked up. But when you add the yellow, it just like with the purple, it just increases the vibrancy of the color, especially when it's baked. I think one of the mistakes people make when they're making these cakes is they put too much batter in each layer and they end up with these super, super tall cake layers and they end up with a cake that's this tall and it tends to kind of fall over. So don't do that. Be, don't get crazy with your cake layers. Do red. color and you feel that it's not quite vibrant enough, just go ahead and add some more food coloring, especially with the red. You know, this is kind of, it's kind of pink right now. I'll funk it. I'm going to add some more. This is basically how you make red velvet cake. <laughs> 
Red food coloring, who knew? And then, of course, there's some other ingredients like buttermilk and a little dash of cocoa powder. But basically, it is red food coloring. There is no master secret. All right, last layer. Into the pan. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes just to kind of see where we're at. And then make sure I don't overcook them because, or bake them, sorry. Uh, because then they start getting brown edges and that starts really messing with our color. So we really want them to be just to the point where they're baked. Really watch them, don't over bake them. Alright. Alright. Ready to put in the oven. Okay, last two colors. Orange. cakes here and they've been chilling in the fridge so they're nice and easy to handle they're not soft which is very important with this type of cake and I got my little six inch cardboard round that we always stack our cakes on top of and I've got some buttercream this is Swiss meringue buttercream and um, you could use whatever kind of buttercream that you like but I am partial to Swiss meringue so Let's figure out what sort of order this goes into. I would say, let's see, rainbow, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red? Does that look right to you? I think so. You see how tall that is? And these are just super thin. So, make sure I keep those in order. And put a little buttercream on the bottom to just keep things solidified. I'm going to put my first layer, and I'm not going to really be too concerned about if it's uneven on top. I'm not going to trim it down or anything because I'm going to level everything with buttercream. You can see this is sliding around a little bit because this cake is not very heavy. So I'm going to put down a non-skid mat to kind of help things stay in place. So we want a nice flat surface. The, the thing that people tend to do the most is they try to hold, they end up holding their spatula like this and you get this dome in the center and it's flat on one side so your layers get domed up 
as you're putting them on. It's not really what we're going for. With how tall this cake ends up being, we really want to make sure that these layers are as flat as possible. Next one. Make sure you press these guys down as you're going so that you don't get any air bubbles trapped in there as we're building. layers on. I want to scrape off the excess. Make sure you fill in any holes. I've got some little holes right here that don't have any buttercream in that crevice so I want to make sure that filling all of my little crevices and I'm using a smaller offset spatula for this part because it's a little bit easier for me. But just use whatever you've got. You can even use a bench scraper. I use that for my bigger cakes sometimes. See how cool that is though? wanted to, you could scrape down all the buttercream like this and put a little layer of buttercream on top and do a naked cake where you don't put buttercream over the, um, the entire cake. You just kind of let the layers show through. That's really popular right now. So if that was something that you thought looked cool and you wanted sort of an easy way to finish off your cake, just basically stop at this point and your, butter, your rainbow cake is done. But I'm going to go ahead and put this into the freezer for about, I'm gonna say about 20 minutes or until it's nice and firm, like really firm because when we do our final layer of buttercream, we want to make sure this cake is nice and firm so that we can do whatever design that we want to do. Because I have this on a little cardboard, I can easily move this cake. If you don't have a cardboard, you're in trouble. <laughs> so I'm gonna go stick this in the freezer and we'll be back in 20 minutes. Okay, we're back. We've got our nicely chilled uh, rainbow cake here, and we're just going to finish it up with some buttercream. I'm just gonna put on my second layer. And the reason why we don't just do one layer of buttercream, uh, you know, all at once, is because A, uh, the crumbs and stuff get into the outside layer of buttercream. So that thin layer of buttercream that we put on first is called the crumb coat. And that basically just seals in the crumbs. And secondly, the when you chill the, the cake like this, it just really like allows you to work against the cake, you know, like pressing against it. It doesn't seem like you're pressing that hard when you're putting on this buttercream, but you really are putting a lot of pressure on one side. So you end up with a cake that eh, starts leaning uh, when you try and just do this all at once with fresh cakes. So I know it seems like a pain to take all the steps to actually like chill your cake and do all of that stuff but I mean it's a lot less time than actually redoing your cake because it fell over. So steps are important to follow with this type of cake. This is a very tall cake. This is like eight inches so it's like a, a taller than 
a normal, normal buttercream layer even. So I'm just putting on a nice thick layer of buttercream here. And there's a couple of different ways that we can finish this cake off. And I'm just kind of going in the vein of teaching someone who doesn't really know how to, to finish a cake. So if you know how to finish a cake, obviously this doesn't apply to you. You can do whatever sort of buttercream texture you, you want to, but if you're a novice cake decorator and you really don't know how to finish a cake, you could do a couple of little messy techniques and I'm going to show you how to do those. Because believe it or not, there is an art to the messy, the messy cake. So we have our messy cake here, but this is like too messy. We don't want it to be, you know, sloppy looking. So the first thing we want to do is straighten out these edges. And you could use your offset spatula if you want, but I'm actually going to use um, my bench scraper. So my um, video cut off right as I was talking about the bench scraper, so I have to kind of insert this in. Apologize. Uh, but basically what I was saying is that I have this bench scraper from um, Fat Girl Cakes, which is obviously a specialty item, and you can use this, and that's awesome, but if you don't have it, you can use one of these, which is like a, um, uh, it's a scraper for applying stucco or, some, or stuff to the, like, walls, and you get it in the, um, the, uh, what is this, the drywall section over at, like, Home Depot or, uh, uh whatever hardware store, but it has like this 90 degree angle and a handle. So it's basically like the same thing as like a bench scraper, except for cheaper and more accessible. So you basically have your messy cake here. I just reapplied some buttercream to my finished cake so I could show you again. And you just hold it flat against the base of your board and you just scrape off the excess buttercream to the point where it's basically flat. You don't have to like obsess over perfection because we're gonna apply our texture to this cake anyways. You just keep scraping until oops. Until basically you have a pretty flat surface. And you use your offset spatula to smooth out the top. And then we're gonna jump back to the video where I show you how to put on the texture. But that's how you that's how you flatten out the sides. Just like that. Just continue going down. Got a nice, easy, rustic, natural kind of a thing going on here. And to finish this guy off, we could add a few little sprinkles, little rainbow sprinkles, if you wanted to. Kind of give people an idea of what's inside. And then we would put this back into the refrigerator so that the whole thing chills before we cut into it. But that's basically it. Okay, our cake has been chilling, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little slice in it for you guys so we can see our beautiful rainbow cake. And a chilled cake is always easier to cut than a fresh cake because of the butter again and the buttercream. Oh, this is exciting. I hope it all stays together. That's the plan. Let's stick that down there. Oh, look at that. Woo! Look at that gorgeous cake. That just looks awesome. Flip that around for you so you can see it. You see in there? That's it. That's how we make our beautiful rainbow cake, super simple, 
just following a few easy steps for uh, optimal results, and there you go. Once again, I'm Liz Merrick. This is the Sugar Geek Show. If you have any questions, as always, you can leave them in the comments, and I will answer them as soon as I can. But until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.